To kickstart the procedural animation, I decided to create an introductory video to what makes an animation procedural. I'll be using sine waves to drive characters and illustrate different examples how the sine wave is one way of making a quick procedural animation. Basic concept number six, procedural animation. What is procedural animation? I got this component, activate it, and it generates a specific running asset for me. Is this procedural? Not exactly. In this running asset we got here, I can't feed in different parameters when activating, and there isn't really different ways of activating it. If I activate this component again, I'll get the exact same result. This isn't very procedural. What makes an animation procedural? If I had a different component that takes different parameters on activation, let's say a speed parameter, I'm going to give it a one for speed and trigger the activation. I get the exact same running asset again. Hold on, let's try feeding it two for the speed and trigger the activation. This time I get an animation that runs twice as fast. We got ourselves procedural animation. If I'm able to plug a formula in and get an animation out without doing manual tweaking frame by frame, I would say that sounds procedural. Say we got this magical formula that generates motion with a click of a button. Then we use this motion to drive our characters. Tweak this magical formula and we can generate a variety of different motions. Procedural animation is all about automating animation and allowing us to generate motions with little effort. Well, that is little effort after it's set up and working. It's like reading the fine print. The setup part may require a bit more effort. So what is this magical formula? I've been using the sine wave to create the animations in this video. Don't ask me how someone derived it because that's way beyond me but I can show you a ton of different ways of using the sine wave to drive character animations, like hand rubbing a surface, finger drawing a picture, hand waving, legs cycling, jumping, procedural walking, and the list goes on. All the animations are driven by sine and cosine waves, no manual keyframes. Well, except for the jumping one, but that is a combination with some manual keyframes and procedural motion path, which I'll get into more a little later. So what does the sine wave look like? It's a formula that looks like this. What does that do? Plotting the sine wave on a graph will look like this. If we continuously feed an accounting number into its input, which would be the stuff within the brackets, the X, each time the result that comes out of this formula, which will be y, and that returns a different result between negative one and one. Why the range negative one to one? That's just the natural behavior of the sine wave. That's what it does. The sine wave slowly increases towards one, and then it reaches its peak value one, it'll slowly come back down, decreasing to negative one. And when it hits rock bottom negative one, guess what happens? it'll slowly increase towards the peak value one again. Rinse and repeat over and over forever. That's the beauty of the sine wave. Because of its natural ability to repeatedly increase and decrease forever, we can use this to drive our animations because we'll know it'll run forever. We don't have to worry about the last frame or manually timing keyframes, but we do have to know how to use the sine wave for our purposes. So how does this sine wave become this? If we look at the graph, we'll see that the sine wave value results in moving up and down, but always between the values of negative one and one. Later on, I'll show you how to manipulate this range so the sine wave can actually generate values beyond negative one and one. But let's keep things simple. Just because the sine wave results in going up and down doesn't mean we can't map this to something that's going left to right. How do I make the hand wave left to right? We modify the X parameter values of the hand rig. If we put a value of one into the X parameter, the hand will go on to the left. And if we put the value to negative one in the X parameter, the hand ends up being on the right side. I wonder if you're seeing what I'm getting at. 
let's place the sine wave formula directly into the x parameter and we should get a hand waving left to right. This is great for a simple back and forth animation. Works great for jumping animations too. I know I said procedural animation and no manual keyframes, but in reality, they can both work together to create more complex animations. Let's take this jumping animation for example. I had created three poses for my character, launching to jump pose, mid-air jump pose, and falling jump pose. Put it all together and it turns into a simple jumping animation. But I wanted the character to jump higher and higher. The keyframes did the body language and the procedural animation using our handy sine wave for the motion path. I'll dig into more details on how the procedural jump in the next video. We can also make things walk around. Let's apply the sine wave to a robot spider character. Throw in some sine wave motion to each leg with an offset. Each leg would be doing the exact same motion. The sine wave walk but each leg would be walking the sine wave at different times. How do we apply an offset to the sine wave? Just add it to the input, the stuff within the brackets. Why add the offset to the input? Why not just add the offset to the end of the sine wave? Adding an offset to the end of the sine wave will change the natural values of the sine wave. Adding an offset to the input is more like shifting everything over. Let's look at it this way. Adding two to the input of this sine wave, well, wouldn't that just give you this one? Everything gets shifted over, but all the values are unchanged. So the left leg could be moving with the same sine wave motion, but there would be a leg compared to the right leg where I placed the same sine wave, but I also added an offset. Adding two to the input will not change the sine wave, only shift it to a different time in the sine wave, which it will eventually get there. That's the offset that I can use to time the spider robot legs for walking. Using this offset trick with the sine wave, we can apply it to hands to make two hands wave and the offset will make the dual hand waving more believable. Just because you don't want both hands to wave robotically. In the next video, we'll start modifying the sine wave and add in some cosine waves to create circular motions. We'll explore different ways of modifying the sine and cosine waves to create complex animations without the need of using keyframes. And speaking of keyframes, I'll demonstrate how you can combine keyframes with procedural animation to push the complexity of your animations even further. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.